You might know better than I. Grant Putnam is in the asylum, yes? He was the only threat. Well, we can only hope. Who's that? It's all in. It's okay. Man, oh man, I should have been out here greeting you guys instead of making all that clatter scaring the daylights out of everyone. Oh, Welcome back, chum. Mm. Mm. It's lovely to see you. You know, when I heard that noise, that made me think of Selena. I guess this is your first time back since the uh, uh, kidnapping. Yeah, since she was killed. Wow, it must have been so tough on you. And on top of almost dying yourself, you come home and find your old friend gone. It's awesome. I know. I haven't really thought about it very much, but... Well, you know, coming in here and seeing where she was laying and everything, just... You know, Putnam told me that he hadn't expected the fight that he got from you, Jim. If I got here a few minutes earlier, I might have been able to Anna. do something. Anna. <laughs> Don't you think that Philomena would have been uh, happy to die to save Robin? Hey, dudes. I think you all need a drink. What a good uh, idea. I'll go get something. You no, know, do you, do you remember, do you remember the story about how we met Philomena? You remember any of that? Of course. Are you I sure did. you remember it? <laughs> yes. I'll never forget her surprised look when we walked out of the water. Did I ever tell you that story? No, I don't believe you did, but go ahead, tell me. Come on, you tell me. Here we go, dudes. Uh, Little nerve tonic won't hurt any of you. Thank you. Damn right. No problem. Thank you. Just yell when you need a refill. Okay. Thank you. Now, let me think of, see if I remember this. Um, Anna and I were on a mission together. For the WSB. Right. The usual cloak and dagger stuff. But we didn't know each other too well in those days. Mm -hmm. And from what I recall, we weren't too impressed with what we knew. No. In fact, we fought like cat and dog for three weeks, even though we were supposed to be this happily married couple. Yeah. Well, there was quite a bit to fight about back in those days. Your beloved wife was a little on the shifty side. I seem to remember that one couldn't be too careful around a certain let's not, let's not confuse the story now. Um, you know, as is often the case when you're on one of these missions, there's, uh, there's always someone chasing you. And in our case, that was what was happening to less than desirable individuals, as I recall. Mm. So what we had to do was get across the border from France to Italy without any papers. How did you manage that? We swam. I can still remember walking out of the surf, mm -hmm. hoping that it was Italy, and seeing this little old Italian lady sitting on the beach, regarding us rather curiously as if we were something from the planet Zoth. <laughs> Philomena. Right. Yeah. Bless her heart. She took us in like we were nearly her family. Mm. Which, come to think of it, is what we ultimately became. I think she saw something else that we hadn't realized ourselves. What was that? I don't know. All this bickering and arguing was just a cover up for something, you know, something else. Yeah, I think I, I think I know. Well, it all kind of hit the fan when she realized that we weren't married. Mm. Before we knew it. The local bishop peddled into town and she'd arranged everything. <laughs> there we were, in the middle of our wedding with all these people we didn't know. It was nice then. Mm -hmm. The whole thing sounds very romantic. I wish I'd been there. Philomena the matchmaker. You know, I think that's how she'd like to be remembered. And also as Robin's grandmother. Yeah. Let's drink a toast. Philomena, may her soul be resting peacefully wherever it is. Yes, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
think everything's set here now. Mm -hmm. I know you're very busy and you have to get back to the office, so thanks a lot. Yeah, you're busy with other people of business. Well, Lewis is covering for me. I uh, said I'd be back when I established the ground rules here. Who are you to set the rules for how we live our lives? I don't care how you live your life. I'm here for Anna and Robin. Incidentally, uh, how many hours do you spend around here? Oh, come on, man. You're pushing us well, a bit well, too far. just trying to help us, that's all. Yeah, I'm sure he is trying to help. But once you've finished cutting all this baloney, will you kindly leave? When I'm satisfied. Now, about the hours. Uh... I heard the question. Well, my hours vary. I usually close the club about 1 a.m. It gets me home around 2 a.m. I wake up in the morning. I have a little breakfast, if that's all right. And then I usually head back to the club about 3 p.m. All right? Uh, and, of course, Anna's going to be here... Unless, of course, she's out shopping or doing whatever. For the next week, but then I'd like to start back at work. Mm, yeah, well, um, I don't know about that. Well, I think I'll feel strong enough to do that. Uh, why don't we talk about that involvement later on? Hmm? Come on, I own half the business. I'm a partner. Let's discuss it later. No, huh? I don't have to discuss it later. How we live our lives and our careers is it's our business, not yours. I, I realise that, and fine. But we'll discuss it later. Now, in the meantime, Olam will continue doing what she's doing, collecting Robin and bringing her back here. I've given her a, a, a mobile telephone, which is connected direct to the police station in the event that something might happen. Hold on a second. Is there something else going on here that we don't know about? Is there something else? Well, nothing specific. But I think we all know, especially you, Anna, that trouble can arrive at... All sorts of strange places from almost anywhere. Now, in the meantime, Olin will continue doing what she's doing. You will be here till three o'clock, and then when you leave, there'll be an off-duty police officer take over. Hold on one second. Who the hell's going to pay for all these off-duty police officers? I can't afford that. Besides that, I can take care of my own family. Can you? On the subject of the alarm that was installed downstairs, I know that Philomena used to turn it off because it's somewhat confused, but it's been reactivated. Uh, Owen understands the technology a little bit better, so it's now on. Hold on, please. You're becoming a bit of a nuisance, you know. You haven't listened to one thing we had to say. You just keep battling on about what you want. I'm not having any of it, do you understand? Wow, Mommy, Daddy, look at the two. My heart. Oh, you had a good day. Good day. Can Daddy stay for dinner? I don't know, sweetheart. I've just got back from the hospital, you know that. Robin, Mommy's very tired. She's got to take it easy after all she's been through. You say, kiddo, why don't you and I make a raid on the cookie jar out there, hmm? There's a hot rumor that somebody baked some fresh homemade oh. cookies today. <laughs> Go and get some cookies and milk. Go on, I'll Oh, sweetheart, in answer to your question, yes, I will be staying for dinner, and then after that, we'll have a nice long chat. Okay? Okay, okay. off you go. Do <laughs> <clears throat> you know what he's He's staying for dinner? Not only is he going to run the place like a police department, he's going to catch three meals into the bar. Look, you've interrupted me so many times, I've forgotten where I am with this plan. Well, do we get a boat in the plan, maybe? Well, sure, you sure you do, but look, yes. it's all worked out. Don't worry about it. Now, I leave work at the usual time. I come straight over here and relieve the officer from the afternoon shift. Hmm? Well, that means you'll be having dinner with us every night, then. <laughs> hey, you didn't have to do that, but thanks, sweetheart. Well, listen, you better listen to me. I'm not going to have you and your wireless telephones and your little lists and your off-duty policemen running about this house. Do you understand that? You don't have much choice. I happen to have enemies out there, and I trust you probably have just as many. And I won't have anyone messing with my daughter again. Final. You have a head as big as Gibraltar, and it's also just as hard. Okay, you buzz off, Buster. Go on, buzz off. Qu I'm not quarreling. I'm going to knock his bloody head no, off. You shush. wish. Wait, you leave. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, I'm bye. going. But look, try to explain to him yes. in not big words what's going okay, on with you. Okay, bye, Robert. Buzz off. He's gone daft, you know. He's gone completely daft. If he comes here for dinner, take him out to the back porch and feed him with a dog. All right. Just calm down. I remember what I said. I know he makes you angry, but he's a very irritating person. He gets his teeth into anything. That's just the way he is. What do you suggest we do? Push all the furniture up against the door and we see him come up the garden path? Robin's going to love that. Oh, come on. He'd love that, too. He loves any kind of resistance. All he needs is a little peace and quiet for a week. 
since he knows that there's no more grand partners out there, he'll be fine. A week? I have to look at that self-effacing mug across my dinner table for one week? Oh. Well, maybe he'll get bored and go away. Well, it can't be too soon for me. As far as I'm concerned, the only threat to peace and security is safety in this house is Robert Scott. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was out walking and I remembered you were coming home today. Yeah. How do you feel? Well, you know, a little rough around the edges. I think you sleep well, sure. You know, uh, how are you? Are you okay? Hmm. I, um, I heard about Frisco. I'm very sorry, and did you hear anything new? No. I've been on the phone all day. They promised him to call me back. You went on the phone to the headquarters in Washington? Yeah, I figured I should go straight to the top. Well, they can be a little difficult. Oh, it's ridiculous. After the last promise to call, I waited and I waited and then I called them back. And then, and then they weren't even there. It was like I was dealing with a bank or something. They treat it as a kind of desk job, you know, some of those people. I know, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. I begged Sean and Robert to help me get some information on Frisco and they kept defending the WSB policies. How can I treat people like this? A WSB agent's wife. I don't know if he's alive or dead. Come on. I feel very badly for you. But, uh, you know, that, that's just the way it is. You know I love Frisco. He was my best officer. But in the WSB, this is how it happens. So that's it. Well, you will find out more later. I mean, it's not as if they've told you he's dead. He may be undercover or something they just can't tell you about. I, I can't believe you're talking like this. You sound just like Sean and Robert. It's not because we're hard, Felicia. It's because we know the truth. I didn't know how soon Robin would need these things, but I thought it would be a good idea to get them over here while I had an evening off. She probably needs them immediately. We don't have any clean clothes, though, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for looking after her. I hope it wasn't too hard. No, no. The only hard part was handling all the news reports she would hear about your kidnapping. I know. She must have been so scared. Yes, I'm sure she was, but she worked very hard not to show it. And my main regret was not having enough time to spend with her. She's such a joy. Are they working you hard there? Well, it's been a combination of things. We have been short of nurses, so I've been working extra shifts to give some of the people with family some time off. And the hospital's been going through accreditation, and well, with Jake gone. You'd rather work than miss him? Well, that's the plan, but I still miss him anyway. What do you hear from him? Very eloquent silence. Oh. I think that Jake has decided that he's not coming back, and he hasn't quite figured out how to tell me yet. That's nonsense. He adores you. Everybody knows that. Well, he has a funny way of showing it. He just signed on to stay down there for two more years. Police commissioner. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a pudgy old man with a cigar. I think you're much too handsome for that image. Well, it's my turn to thank you. Well, Robert, I think you just have to excuse Cheryl. She has to flirt. It's like, you know, exercising her reflexes. That's not true. Robert is handsome. Well, you don't have to tell me mm -hmm. how handsome he is. I've known it for a long time, haven't I? In fact, you know, I have something you might like to say. You know, Cheryl was a teenage little two-by-four, you know, so she had her two little... Two-by-four. Transfer. I, I don't think anyone really cares to see the Stan I, Berry family album. Uh, How nice she carries her sister's <laughs> photographs around. <laughs> unfortunately, I have to be going. Oh, well, don't leave on my camera. Well, no, actually, I think I'll go with you, darling. Uh, I'm going to have my hair done before you take me to dinner tonight, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go, sweetheart. I'll tell you about a good plastic surgeon you can use. Oh, oh great. Nice little tuck in there. You uh, two have fun, oh. huh? Sure. Bye-bye. Okay. Yeah, it's not my family. Um, did you get everything all set up at the labor house the way you wanted it? More or less. What about Duke? Well, he's not too thrilled, but frankly, I don't give a damn. He may or may not be part of the problem. I don't know, but either way, I will never have my daughter upset like that again. You know, it's all well and good to take a hard line with Duke, but uh, don't forget two things, huh? What? One is that Duke is married to Anna, for better or worse, and more than likely for life. And two, 
that he is just as stubborn and proud and bullheaded a, a Scotsman as you were an Aussie. And besides, you already arrested him once. To which he'll never forgive me. <laughs> give it ten years. Oh, look, to hell with him. The guy took a slug at me, right? What am I supposed to do, give him green stamps? Uh, what, what did you expect under the circumstances? A totally cooperative citizen? All right. All right. Point taken. But I'm still a tad curious as to how he found that information out regarding where, where Anna was being held before us. And you may remain a tad curious forever. And besides, it could have been just a coincidence. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, uh, hey, wait a minute. I'll tell you what I've forgotten to do. I, I recoded the alarm system in the house. They don't know that. Hello. Uh, Dirk, it's, it's Robert. What uh, the devil are you calling about? Didn't I make it perfectly clear this morning? When I want you, I will call you. We're fine here except for your pestering. Look, you don't know why I'm calling. Yes, I do. It's all part of the package, isn't it? You've gone nuts worrying over Robin. Well, you listen to me. Your fear will terrorize them more than anything else. Uh... What was that, Robert? Yes, it was Robert. He's gone haywire, and I'm not going to put up with it any longer. Well, he's only concerned about us. Does he think he's the only one who can worry? I can worry, too. I'll take care of my own family. I can protect them. I'll protect them from Robert Scorpio if I have to. Hello? Hello? 